Ever since the announcement dropped about Blackmagic Raw being available to Panasonic shooters via the BM Video Assist recorders, I immediately thought about how that would affect their lineup of pocket cinema cameras. The Blackmagic Pocket 4K was a revolutionary camera and still is widely used and loved today, along with the new 6K and 6K Pro models. However, now users can shoot the well-respected Blackmagic RAW codec without owning a Blackmagic camera, has it sort of made the Pocket series a little bit pointless? I've been using the 6K Pro alongside my Panasonic S5 now for just over a month, and in today's video I'll be comparing my experience with the two and ultimately summarising whether there is still a reason to opt for a Blackmagic Pocket camera even after this new update to the Panasonic lineup. Straight off the bat, I'd like to mention a few things that I absolutely that you love about the 6K Pro and that for some people will definitely make the camera worthwhile. Starting with internal NDs, they're amazing and super handy when you're constantly moving between bright and dark environments and they definitely give this camera more of a cinema style experience. The menu system is easily the most intuitive that I've ever used and makes changing settings and navigating features an absolute breeze. I think Blackmagic have really done a brilliant job with the user interface and that should definitely be a mention in favour of these cameras. Of course, Panasonic are among the far better options out there for decent menu systems and user interfaces, so they both get a point for this in my opinion, but of course the Blackmagic like, system in itself is just so good to use, so yeah, it still does get the edge for me. Another feature of the 6K Pro and all other pocket cameras that I really like is a mini XLR input, which by far are more robust and provide much better audio quality for those who want to record audio internally. Again, I would say this is another cine style feature of the 6K Pro, and I've definitely enjoyed using the mini XLR inputs over the last month. As a quick demo of the audio quality, here's a few clips I recorded using both the Mini XLR ports and an external recorder so you can compare the sound side by side. I use the same Rode NTG4 Plus mic for both examples, so they are on even playing fields. Okay, so this is an example of the audio that comes straight out of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera at 6K Pro using one of the Mini XLR inputs. Um, I'm using the same Rode NTG4 Plus that I normally use for all my talking shots. So yeah, this is a sort of comparison to see what it sounds like using the internal preamps with this camera. Does it sound good? I'm gonna be quiet for a second so we can hear what the noise floor sounds like. Okay, and then as a quick comparison, here is the same shot again, but this time I'm running the same XLR mic into the Tascam ZR60, which is an external XLR recorder. So yeah, a quick noise floor test for this recorder. And of course, the biggest plus side of the 6K Pro is the image quality, which is nothing short of stunning. It definitely looks and behaves a little differently to the Panasonic footage, and I wouldn't say that it's better by any means, but it definitely does look very nice indeed. Unfortunately though, this is actually where the positives stop in my opinion, and there's actually quite a few things about the 6K Pro that I wasn't generally a fan of. The form factor and size is ridiculous and very hard to comfortably hold. Even though the system should technically alleviate the need to use an external monitor and rig it up, it definitely feels like you need to come up with some sort of rig to use it comfortably when shooting handheld. The build quality also leaves much to be desired since the body of this camera is very plasticky and not very premium feeling at all. But I'm sure everyone watching this video is already aware of that by now. And that's contrasted quite a lot by the Panasonic S5 which boasts a much smaller and manageable form factor and it's built from far better materials. All while being a lot easier to rig up and manipulate for various shooting scenarios. I've also found the battery life of the 6K Pro to be worse than my Panasonic S5. I did have the battery grip for the 6K Pro though and that helped a lot with this issue but then again it was making this already giant body even bigger and ridiculous to manage. So now onto the juicy part. How different does BM RAW look from each of these sensors? Of course, I was expecting there to be a few differences since they're ultimately manufactured by different people. And one thing I noticed straight away was how much warmer the image was coming out of the 6K Pro, even when both cameras were set to the same white balance in the same lighting conditions. As you can see here, I shot a very short sequence of my brother with controlled lighting inside my front room, and both cameras were daylight balanced, yet the image of the 6K Pro is so much warmer. To be honest though, I really like the warmer look to my footage, but for me, my biggest worry would be how accurate the camera is when actually capturing the light in the scene, since to my naked eye, the room did not look like that at all. I would say that the Panasonic S5 shooting B-RAW definitely captured a more realistic image in terms of what I was seeing with my naked eye, but with that being said, I would normally go ahead and warm up the shot a little bit in post, so the 6K Pro sort of did that step for me. So, you know, it's sort of a give and take situation here, I think. And then as you can see here, I've matched the temperature and general tonality between both cameras in this timeline. And while I didn't spend a ton of time really dialing the look, I'd say that it was actually pretty easy to get a very similar looking image from both of these cameras. It frustrates me that I'm about to describe the 6K Pro image as more cinematic, but that's genuinely the only way I can describe it when compared to the B-RAW image coming out of the S5. 
it has that sharp but soft vibe going on that I generally really like about the image quality that comes out of a more cinema centric style camera. With that being said, the same can be achieved quite easy with the S5's image sensor and for that matter any of the other full frame Panasonic sensors. I find that the Panasonic cameras actually give it a very good starting point for a multitude of visual styles since the colours are very neutral and accurate and of course the detail you can push from the B-roll files allows you to really dial in the look that you're going for. I guess what it really comes down to is what you need from your camera. If you need the absolute maximum versatility possible in all ways, so for rigging, recording codecs and of course form factor, then there's absolutely no doubt that the S5 would be a better fit for you. I like the fact that you have two different types of compressed RAW codecs that you can actually shoot with the S5, either ProRes RAW or Blackmagic RAW, and I also like the fact that it's very easy to create a rig that suits any shooting style. I've also become spoiled by the absolutely incredible IBIS system in the Panasonic cameras, and for me that makes the 6K Pro a very tricky camera to use while shooting handheld. The 6K Pro size and form factor also lends itself to extra work when you're looking to shoot with different rigs. For example, it's widely known that you'll need to do your research when choosing a gimbal for this camera since it doesn't fit on most gimbals without using a base plate that will then offset the body center point and then use counterweights to assist the motors. So using a gimbal with this camera is just a headache in general. Overall though, there's many things that I do like about the 6K Pro including the fantastic image quality, internal NDs and exceptional user interface. I definitely say that this camera has a place in the world of cameras around a £2,000 price point and if you are looking for the most complete cinema package on a very tight budget then I'd definitely say that this is a great option compared to the S5. But if you want a camera that still allows you to utilise the flexibility of the Blackmagic RAW codec and is far easier to work with when making a handheld and stabilised rig and that can also produce extremely pleasing image quality then the S5 would be a far better option for you. Yes, with the S5 you will need to purchase an external recorder and you may want to use an external audio recorder or adapter of some sort if you want to use high quality XLR mics but for me it still stands to be the best all around package for video shooters at this price point. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat useful, entertaining or interesting and if you did then please subscribe to the channel because I do make a lot of content here surrounding the Panasonic lineup of cameras and all that sort of stuff. So if you're into that sort of thing then this channel will definitely be for you. And yeah, thanks again for watching and hopefully I shall see you in the next one.